Philippines, where he was raised and educated. Yes, Adolf Schickel Gruber is Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was the son of Jose Rizal, via Clara Poles. Sta Filipinas, mabuhay, magandang araw, and to all the other viewers around the world, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're going to make a video reaction to the untold story of Marcus Gold, um, Dr. Cerasal, and Father Diaz. We did get a suggestion to this video by Freddy Bagadino. Thanks for your suggestion to this video and thanks for the support to our YouTube channel. So, And thank you also to one of our favorite blogger, Pedali TV. Thank you for this. Okay, so before we start, we would like to thank everyone, family, friends, supporters, viewers, followers, and subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting our YouTube channel. And if you are new to here, please do not forget to subscribe to us. Okay, so let's start. Welcome to Puerto Rico TV. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you. Certain names have loomed large in history of the Philippines over the past 100 years. Without being unjust to those who made a meaningful contribution to the independence and autonomy of the Philippines, it can be fairly claimed that the names which have attracted the most public attention are those of Jose Rizal, Ferdinand Marcos, Tomoyaki Yamashita, and perhaps Don Esteban Benitez Taliano. Everyone has their own story to tell of the good work of Rizal in terms of his patriotic writing, of Ferdinand Marcos in martial law, of Tomoyuki Yamashita and his buried treasure, and of course the Taliano clan in their claim as true title holders of the Philippines. And few evenings pass that one or another is not mentioned in conversation with friends and associates. One would imagine that with such names being universal conversation pieces, that nothing in their life has been spared intense scrutiny, and that there is nothing yet to be revealed about their respective lives. If there is nothing yet to be revealed about their lives, then please explain, among other mysteries, a, where one would find the grave of Rizal, and, b, why are there no Japanese visitors to the shrine for Tomoyaki Yamashita? We try to revisit published history, with a view to bringing a clear understanding of the role that each played in the mysterious forces which acted to promote the Philippines we know today. Of course we shall need a starting point, and because it bears relevance to what we investigate, we choose as our starting point, the birth of Queen Victoria of England, on 24th of May, 1819. Now the published story of Queen Victoria's birth at Kensington Palace was not entirely accurate, even though she did reach Kensington Palace on the same day as her birth. In fact, she arrived in this life somewhat earlier than expected, while her mother, Princess Victoria of saxe coburg was aboard a Dutch ship in the English Channel, near Dover, at birth. That variation between published fact and reality was simply to preserve the concept of born on English soil on behalf of a woman destined to become the future Queen of England. Again, what is not published, but is widely known within the establishment of England, is that Queen Victoria was one of twins, and had a brother. That boy was, in all probability, autistic, a condition little understood at the material time, and the courtiers decided that he was unsuitable to be raised in precincts of the court, and while every facility possible was placed at his disposal, he was kept separated from the court, and educated, privately, badge of the North Borneo Company. Note the Lion of Scotland and the name MacLeod in his late twenties, the young man, brother of the Queen, moved to Borneo then known as the Dutch East Indies, and became entranced with the life, adventure and business opportunity offered by that country. In conjunction with Baron von Overbeck, he formed and became chairman of the North Borneo Company, which engaged in exploitation of the natural resources of that country. His name? He was known as Prince Julian MacLeod Taliano. Being of princely bearing, well educated and clearly wealthy, he was introduced to a number of eligible women, and eventually became an armored of, and married, the Princess Tejada. 
Mark now that North Borneo was Muslim territory, and in taking his Muslim wife, Prince Julian MacLeod Taliano converted to the Islamic faith, thus fusing the religious affiliations of both his motherland and Borneo, as he was a prince of the royal blood. Likewise, that marriage interwove the fortunes of the two distinct clans of differing faiths. Taliano as a Muslim, acquired seven wives, but still maintained the libertine pursuits of his early life. His pursuit of another princess, and their liaison, beyond marriage, produced a male child. With connivance of the Catholic Church, a means was found to provide for welfare of the child. Today one hears many stories of the orphan, found in a basket, outside the home of the Mercado family, in Calambo Laguna province, about 50 kilometers south of Manila. The boy was raised by the Mercado family, and given the name Jose Protacio Mercado. The child grew, and proved to be extremely intelligent. He was incredibly active, and wanted to be the best at all he undertook. He referred to himself as Rexal, the king of all, which name soon became adapted to Rizal, and so we have Jose Protacio Rizal. The child had been well provided for in terms of money. And while it was unusual for the times, he went to Madrid to study, since he was proficient. One moment. Uh, Dr. Reza Rizal actually is the national hero of the Philippines. So, on this video, on my understanding, he is a prince. So, he's not an ordinary man. Because, you know, in our Philippine history, it says that um, he belongs to the Mercado family. But now, it's saying that... Jose Rizal, our national hero, is a prince. Okay. The Spanish language. Spain caused him to reflect on the number of blind persons in the population, and he determined to become a doctor with specialty in the eyes. He chose to study under a particular professor, and went to Paris to join the classes of that professor, but found that the professor had moved to a university in Heidelberg, Germany. He followed to Germany, mastered the German language, and eventually took his medical degree in 1886. As a doctor, he now saw patients. There was resistance to eye surgery, because few chose to allow anyone to operate on their eyes, but one young student at Heidelberg University was desperate to have her eyes corrected, and so that student, Josephine von Braun. I'm not sure, but I think that Einstein was on that moment also at that school, so on the same time. Okay. Also on the Probably. same school, I think, because he was okay. uh, also in Germany mm. and in France. Okay. So he have, Einstein was in many schools, in France, Germany. Maybe they become classmates. Maybe. <laughs> okay. I can became the first patient of Jose Rizal. The operation was a success, and Josephine Bracken very quickly introduced her uncle, the King of Prussia, Wilhelm I, favored grandson of Queen Victoria, then German Emperor, at Potsdam, near Berlin, who had similar eye problems. Again the operation was a success, and the fame of Jose Rizal as an ophthalmologist was assured. The Emperor of Germany, grateful for the work of Rizal, dedicated the Asian tea house in his honor, which tea house is now a popular tourist attraction in the castle of Sanzai. The emperor further recommended Rizal to his relative, the emperor of Austria. Rizal arrived in Austria in 1887, and was introduced to a Jesuit priest, Father Ferdinand Blum. I'm now a little bit confused, because uh, they talk about uh, Will Willem the, the first. I was always think that it was a Dutchman and not a German. So I'm a little confused in that story, but it is possible that maybe the German uh, king was also have the name Willem. Yeah, but probably. In my eyes. Uh, yeah. Who had recently arrived from the Philippines, where he conducted a Jesuit school on the island of Cebu. Since it was considered that the Emperor may take some time to consent to the intended operation, Father Bloom entered invited Rizal to stay in his apartment. In a near apartment was a young lady, Clara Poles, who was a staff member of the Emperor's household. A liaison between Jose Rizal and Clara Poles, who was the wife of Aloy Sickle Gruber, produced a male child, 
later named Dadolf. The husband, Alois Sikel Gruber, suspected that another man was responsible for the pregnancy of his wife, and he severely mistreated the child. Blumenscher decided that to avoid further mistreatment of the child, he should take the boy to Philippines, and the mother readily agreed, because she knew that Rizal would be there. And so Adolf Sikel Gruber, as the boy had been named, came to the island of Cebu in the Philippines, where he was raised and educated. Yes, Adolf Schickel Gruber is Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was the son of Jose Rizal, via Clara Poles. With his fame spreading. I'm sure that the European people are going to be like, really? <laughs> yeah. Because they, they, because they never did know this. Yes, I, I don't know also because, you know, when I was in the Philippines, I was a tour guide for almost two years, actually. So now I feel that what I'm telling to the tourists is not accurate, <laughs> I think. Because, you know, Dr. Serizal, our national hero, he traveled a lot. He is polyglot, so he speaks a lot of languages, European languages, so he can communicate to all European people. So that is possible that Dr. Serizal met what's her name clara Pauls, and they produce a kid that's hitler i don't know i don't know how to react with this but that's possible we don't know we don't know okay. yeah i'm not really confused <laughs> and i think every german that is going to watch this video <laughs> is also going to be confused of this one <laughs> rizal went to japan to perform an operation on the eyes of the emperor and once again, a dalliance with a Japanese noblewoman, the Princess Keiko produced a male child. The Tenno himself wrote to Rizal and warned it that he would educate the boy in the very best schools, and so the second son of Jose Rizal would attend the finest colleges in England, and ultimately become the highest ranking general in the Imperial Japanese Army, General Tomoya Yamashita. <laughs> Meanwhile, the first son of Rizal was at the Jesuit school in Cebu and saw his father only at those fleeting times that he was able to make a visit. It is considered that the reported situation... Sorry, but I'm flabbergasted. I really am like... Yeah. <laughs> I cannot really understand this. <laughs> They're saying that when... The so it is the kid of Rizal. When, he went, uh, when Rizal went to Japan, Rizal met the princess of Japan. They got and, the and, relationship. And, and they make Hitler. No, Japan, ja, Yamashita. I, I'm speaking about Hitler. From who is Hitler? Oh, is Hitler. the kid of Rizal. Yes, from the... Of, and that is a Filipino Rizal. Yes. Yes. But he did get the kid with? Clara Pauls. The and, Austrian... I think he's from Austria. <laughs> that, 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 so, that is what I'm saying so, here. So you want to say Hitler was this um, a prince? King, because he was the king who, who? of Austria. Hitler is the king. Because, no, okay. His father was uh, a king, Rizal. He's not a king. No, he, he was a prince. Yeah, but no one knows about it actually. Yeah, but yeah, uh, no maybe you had a brother that get hired. Yeah. yeah, but so that means that he was in two royal families. That's possible, yeah. Because, you know, we never know also that... Uh, yeah, in my country, they don't uh, speak the truth. They don't yeah, want us yeah, to know yeah. what have happened yeah. in the past. Yes. I really don't yeah. know this kind of stories. We don't know also because this... I think not even my parents. You know, we don't know also in my country because we're just only reading the history. We're just only relying to what... in the You know, in, in the history book. So, there's a lot of things that... People don't know. No, I want to hear more because yeah. I'm not really... Uh... Yeah, we're getting crazy now. <laughs> Rizal's exile in Dabit, being sentenced to death and executed by firing squad. Now Rizal Park, Manila, is indeed extraordinary, highly improbable, questionable, and in view of the value of his surgical prowess, beyond reason, how could a man, known as an idol, and hero to Filipinos, friend of kings and emperors, highly intelligent and speaking 12 languages, be ordered killed by the much hated friars, and shot by 21 Guardia Civil, his countrymen, in Manila in 1896. 
the purported execution at Los Banos, Laguna, of General Tomoyaki Yamashita. No Japanese national will ever accept that General Yamashita surrendered to the Americans. A Japanese general of the highest order, and with connection to the royal household, will never surrender. Such a general is bound by the code of honor of his calling, and must commit harakiri, the ritual suicide signifying failure. Thus, whoever is buried at Mundlupa, south of Manila, that body is not the body of General Yamashita. We do not speculate on the escape, whereabouts or post-war activities of General Yamashita, but our hypothesis that he was not the victim of the gallows designed to dispatch him is reinforced by the fact that no Japanese national pays homage at the shrine to General Yamashita, for the very good reason that every Japanese national knows that his surrender was impossible, and that some undefined, politically inspired pantomime has played havoc in obscure. I just want to mention something. If Adolf Hitler was a Filipino, half, <laughs> then the Filipino killed the Jews. So now, <laughs> I am a little, yeah, feeling weird now because that is not in all my history, you know, so. There are rumors that during his time at the English universities, that Yamashita became the lover of Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyons, a beautiful debutante, which liaison continued after her marriage to Albert, the Duke of York. As the fates ordained, Albert, a sickly man, the remarkable aspect of the affair between Yamashita and Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyons, if it has substance, is that the present Queen Elizabeth II could well be a daughter of General Yamashita, and therefore, a granddaughter of Jose Antonio Rezal. So let us now summarize what we have constructed from a more pragmatic view of the stated history of the Philippines, at least in terms of reviewing on what has been referred to as the hidden wealth of Marcos. Prince Julian MacLeod Taliano, brother of Queen Victoria, is the father of the man later known as Jose Rizal. Jose Rizal is the father of two further important figures in world history, with those figures being the German leader Adolf Hitler, and the Japanese general Tomoyuki Yamashita. The death of Rizal by firing squad is disclosed as a well-orchestrated entertainment, equally as the Battle of Manila, and post the pseudo-firing squad event, Jose Rizal became the relevant father Jose Antonio Diaz. As the son of Prince Julian MacLeod Taliano, Rizal, now as Reverend Father Jose Antonio Diaz, was entrusted with the relocation and management of the massive wealth of the Taliano clan, and perhaps the fused assets of his British relatives. Wait, actually, I heard some news online that Dr. Jose Rizal turned to Father Antonio Diaz. So, what are they trying to say that Dr. Jose Rizal, uh, he did not really die? So, I, I, I get confused also. And the one that are uh, buried in Luneta Park, you know, where the soldiers are there and protecting the place, they said that the body of Dr. Jose Rizal is not there. So where? I don't know. Okay. Thus the movement of 600,000 metric tons of gold from the Vatican to Manila to facilitate establishment of the first central bank of the Philippines. Recall that the Taliano clan were the principal landowners of the Philippines. The gold bullion lent by the royal family to the Republic of the Philippines, consisting of 650,000 metric tons now, through relevant father Jose Antonio Diaz by arrangement of the brilliant lawyer attorney Ferdinand de Marcos in the year 1949, for the establishment of the required gold reserves of the newly installed Central Bank of the Philippines, should be maintained in the Central Bank vault toward maintenance of the country's gold reserves, and the same shall be withdrawable 50 years thereafter, with 5 years moratorium. That the said 640,000 metric tons of gold bars transported by then surviving son of Prince Julian MacLeod Taliano from the Vatican after the World War, in the person of relevant father Jose Antonio Diaz, trustee of the royal family, and client of then attorney Ferdinand de Marcos deserves a just compensation for no less than 30% of the total value of the said 640,000 metric tons. 
So, now that we have made a brief journey through historical events which shaped the nation known as the Republic of the Philippines, we can reflect on what we have learned, and endeavor to speculate as to what motivated President Marcos and relevant Father Jose Antonio Diaz to join forces in accumulating and placing massive wealth. President Marcos had a consuming passion to make the Philippines the most stable and progressive state in the Asian community. As a lawyer, senator, and later president, it can be accepted that he was perfectly familiar with the land title claim of the Talian Oak land, and equally well aware of the massive gold deposit made by that clan to establish the first central bank of the Philippines. His initial meeting with Reverend Father Jose Antonio Diaz must have been a revelation, because his legal brain would rapidly recognize that he was in presence of a man who represented wealth, royalty, power and influence, and just as quickly, he recognized the outgrowth of that relationship in terms of his longer-term vision for the Philippines. It is no secret that President Marcos and relevant Father Jose Antonio Diaz enjoyed a harmonious relationship lasting many years, and that they actively cooperated in multiple financial adventures designed to achieve each of their individual objectives. Reverend Father Jose Antonio Diaz enjoyed a unique distinction in terms of the purposes of Marcos in placing and securing valuable assets, in that he was a persona ecclesiae, a parson, where the assets at his disposal were nominally those of the church, and thus Diaz held patrimony of those assets in his own name, essentially as a corporation sole. President Marcos obviously designed the legal strategies which encompassed and preserved the wealth, while Reverend Father Jose Antonio Diaz provided the wealth and high-level connection necessary to successfully domicile that wealth as instructed by President Marcos. In one unique area, Reverend Father Jose Antonio Diaz could identify wealth concealed by the Japanese and German forces, and the legal strategy soft President Marcos could provide the domicile and protection for that recovered wealth, and so such recoveries became the centerpiece of their financial engagements. It was no easy task. Any recovery from a burial site would contain asset subject of the statute of limitations, and if fully disclosed would attract multiple claimants. Marcos played his role masterfully by dealing astutely with the financial hyenas who habitually prey upon such assets, and several arrangements with the Pentagon, United Nations, International Monetary Fund and other August bodies preserved the assets through permitting their use by the scavengers, but retaining title to the involved principal. Deposits with banks were largely made under bailment conditions, thus assuring their security until such time as the statute of limitations lapsed. It can be shown that the relevant Father Diaz was not a passive participant in the looting and reallocation of the gold and treasure of Europe and Asia but took an active role in its movement and processing. His academic achievements are well documented in multiple publications. But here we are far more interested in his activities relative to looted treasure. Little is officially known or recorded about a certain Jose Antonio Diaz, who became papal nuncio, and was invited to be the new pope in February 1922. He declined. He had more important things to do. He was chosen by the royal families to be the trustee for all the gold left by the royal families, they had entrusted him already with their eyes, and so they could as readily entrust him their gold, which was now lying secretly in the Vatican's caverns in Benevento, Italy. Jose Antonio Diaz decided he would bring all the gold to the Philippines. Nobody would look for it there. It did not last long. There seemed to be a build-up for another war. The former owners of the gold got nervous, Pope Pius XI. All the while Hitler silently and secretly ransacked the faraway bonded warehouses of the British banks and brought the gold, more often than not in submarines, to Singapore where it was delivered and handed over in brief ceremonies to the Japanese Imperial Army under Hitler's half-brother Tomoyaki Yamashita. The submarines headed back, so that nobody would discover the subterfuge. Jose Antonio Diaz shipped the 650,000 metric tons back to the Vatican. Years later Pope Pius XII asked him to bring it back to Manila. There were no telecommunications in the form we understand today but we can imagine that Jose Antonio Diaz, Adolf Hitler, 
in Tomoyuki Yamashita knew what they were doing. They were the original Axis powers established during the Berlin Olympics, where Japan's Emperor Hirohito visited Hitler, formalized with Italy, in the 1940 Tripartite Pact. They did the planning and they plundered the gold, Hitler in the West, Japanese forces in the East. They came together and met in Singapore, which was then official. So what I heard in this uh, story till now is that the son of Rizal that live in Japan and the son of Rizal that live in Germany were both two Filipinos. Yeah. The Netherlands, I'm not sure, but the Netherlands have stole all the gold from the Philippines, brought all the gold from the Philippines to the Netherlands. I'm not sure, but I want a yeah, clarification sure because I know the VOC, because I mentioned it before in the story that the VOC did stole all the gold, because I know that from my history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the war was between Germany, uh, the Netherlands and America and Germany and Japan fighting the Netherlands. That is what I understand out of it. And Hitler wanted the gold back from his uh, family. That is what I understand. And America and the Netherlands did uh, win or something and then they make an agreement mm. then they make an agreement about uh, what will happen with it so I am now a little bit confused about uh, my country saying that uh, yeah that they did have so much and blah 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 when it was not even from them hmm Actually, I heard also one story that <laughs> it's really funny. It's really funny to say, but they said that because if it's true that Hitler and Yamashita is the son of Jose Rizal, the national hero of the Philippines, they said that their family is the one that started the war. <laughs> so for, it's, it's, fun, it's funny to say, but probably it's true. We don't really know the history because no one write it in the books, actually. No one. So no, I, no. I am a little bit confused about this story because, yeah, yeah what is now the truth? Yes. Because, it, because yeah. my country is also included to this story, but you don't hear it. Yeah. And they are not mentioning my country. And why? Because they won the war? I don't know. I, I don't know also. I don't know. Because America belonged to the Netherlands mm. and that is New Amsterdam. America is Netherlands. Okay, we have Amsterdam here in the Netherlands okay. and we have New Amsterdam in America. Okay, so what he's trying to say that the original name of New York is New Amsterdam. But England went to America and I think they would they won the fight. So they changed the name of New York. Uh, sorry, they name they changed the name of New Amsterdam to New York. So it's just you know it's a big world history. So you know, it's, it takes time to it's read. It's for me uh, really, really difficult and I yeah. really want to know the whole truth about this. Yes. What really yeah. have happened because I'm a little bit confused because yeah. I know also that, uh, yeah. that Japan uh, did go to the Philippines, yeah. kill Filipinos mm. and uh, put the gold in the mountains mm. and uh, then they uh, later lost because the, they were fighting uh, not only Filipinos, but also the, the Europeans. Yeah. And uh, to, yeah, what, what was his name? Himoshita? Yamashita? Yeah, so yeah. this Himoshita. Yeah. So the whole story is for me still a little bit... Yeah. So only one yeah. thing that may, maybe I can say that there is a story behind the scene. That maybe we never read, we never see, but there's always behind the scenes stories. Okay, let's start this because, you know, it takes too long. Sorry, guys. <laughs> a British crown colony and had the smelting of the gold done by the expert German company, the Giusa. From there, 
the gold was brought to the Philippines to be buried under supervision of Prince Chichibu, and to become known as the infamous Yamashita treasure. It was also in 1931 that Japan started to invade the Philippines. Mostly civil engineers in disguise, the Japanese started to build a wide array of tunnels and caves, thus indicating that they prepared well ahead for the burial of the gold that would come from Europe and China, the gold that Hitler and his Japanese allies stole from the richest of the rich on both sides, from those who had money enough to buy gold, stash it away in secret bank vaults, so that they would not have to pay tax. Immediately following the war, in the International Court of Justice, World Court, in The Hague, Holland. The total of the missing gold was 946,000 metric tons, and it is still missing. This clarify my story. So I'm happy. Do you see that I was right? Yeah, because okay. the Court of Justice, actually, the International Court of Justice is located here in the Netherlands. Okay, just uh, let's start. The World Court had ruled that all gold found from buried treasure in the Philippines would, legally, belong to the original claimants of World War II loot. Until today there has not been a single claimant. The claims are listed per country. There are 13 countries claiming. No names of persons or families are tendered. The Federal Reserve, the U.S. Treasury, the International Bank for Settlement, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank are patently aware of the location of the gold, and to them, it is the same, as if the gold was stashed secretly in America. So, Father Jose Antonio Diaz was an active participant in concealment and masking of the stolen treasures of World War II. Yes he was a patriot. Yes he was an accomplished and sophisticated person. Yes, he was a friend of royalty across a broad spectrum and to the end he served the Philippines, as his letter of instruction which details, what is to be done with the accumulated wealth, demands that its primary objective be specific projects for betterment of the Philippines, whether subscribing to the accuracy of published history, or influenced by the revelations of this essay, it must be admitted that Diaz was first and foremost a patriot. Even if his modus operandi was unorthodox in the extreme, perhaps we should silently hope, that his vision is realized, along with President Marcos, his accomplice in the world's most incredible seizure and conversion of stolen wealth, the Philippines cries out for administrative reform. It has a poverty index equivalent to Sub-Sahara Africa, and land reform, which should be a keystone in correcting that situation is totally ignored by all administrations. The past government hide it and never told anyone except those who lived at the time that those things were happening. They knew the truth, the kids now don't know, so whatever they taught them at school they believed it right away. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't hesitate to comment. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you. Okay. So now my question is, if they have so, if this whole story that it was from the uh, from the Philippines and it is true, why was the Philippines so poor all that years? And Japan grow, China grow, Netherlands grow. Nah, yeah, Netherlands did not grow. Yeah, we did not build anything. There's but. a story behind it, and maybe we can. Uh, discuss it next time about it because you know um, of course uh, most of the foreigners d do not know the Philippine history what's going on in the Philippines inside of the Philippines so what they see here only in the television is what the media is saying so you know there's like, like what I said there's always a story behind the scene so so what I say hmm. one euro one peso one dollar <laughs> And take note, uh, and, and America cannot say no. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and by the way, in 1975, I think I'm not sure of the date, guys, but during that time, Philippines is belong to the first world country. So I don't know what happened. Um, there's a lot of crazy thing that happened for many. No, okay. So. In the in our history, was Hitler a bad guy? Mm. Yeah. Hitler was in my history yeah. a very bad guy. 
Yeah, to every, to but if I see eyes. this video, yeah. Hitler was not a bad guy. He yes. killed. He, he killed people. Okay, he did. But he fought for the wealth of his father's family. Yeah, that's what I in my mind also. So in my eyes, that he attack uh, the Jewish people was wrong. Of course, because what have the Jews, by the way, to do with it? Time will come that the truth will reveal. Yeah. So. I okay. hope so. <laughs> yes, we hope so. All right. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also place a nice comment below the video. And you can share your thoughts, what you think, how it did happen. And yes. we will also reply to it. And <laughs> I'm asking myself, did more people make a reaction on this video? I'm not really sure, okay. but it's a great privilege for, for us to make a video reaction for this because, yeah. you know, it's part of the world history, not only uh, history of the Philippines, but it's a world history. So it's, you know, it's, if it's true, you know, it's a big revelation for everyone. All right. So before we go, we would like to thank everyone, family, friends, supporters, viewers, subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting our YouTube channel. We'll see you in our next video. Yeah, and be healthy, be safe, and God bless to everyone. Bye! Till next time!